Hello everybody and welcome to Flock Talk. Now learning how to recognize and read your bird's body language is probably the single most important skill you will ever have when it comes to forming a long-lasting trusting relationship with them. However, there aren't exactly a ton of resources that detail what on earth their body language means and what it looks like. So that is what we are going to start doing here today. One thing I really do want to address right at the beginning here is that the body language does vary quite dramatically from species to species, and there will be small differences amongst the exact same species just on an individual basis. The way that one bird will utilize their body language can be a bit different than the way a bird identical to them uses that same body language. Especially when we are working with birds who are captive raised, who have not really socialized with a bunch of other birds, you will find that the way that they use their body language is innately different from one to the next. So with that, while this will be a good guide on what these things generally tend to mean, do keep in mind that it could be different for your specific bird, and the best thing to do to understand is to observe them acknowledge when that body language is occurring and start connecting what they're trying to accomplish by utilizing it. That way you can start to recognize what it means for your bird, what they're trying to communicate, and you can go from there. The next thing I want to address is that we cannot address body language on an individual basis. We have to interpret what is known as a cluster of body language cues. And what this means is that we need to be observing the entire picture when we are analyzing a behavior and their body language. One single body language cue can mean a hundred different things depending on the context and the other body language cues that are accompanying it. So while one body language cue may mean one thing in one set context, when it is accompanied by other behaviors and other body language cues, it can end up meaning something different. So it's important that we are taking a look at everything the bird is doing in order to correctly analyze and interpret their behavior. So for this video, we're going to focus mostly on the different body language cues that a bird can use to tell you when they want some space. Maybe they're feeling afraid or they're feeling threatened. These are the sorts of things that they may use to be able to tell you that they want space. Learning when your bird is telling you to back off is the most helpful tool that you can have because the more space you can give them, the more they're going to trust you, the more they know that you are there to respect their boundaries, and the easier it's going to be for you to form a strong relationship with them. Now the first and most obvious body language sign is lunging. This is when a bird will strike their beak forwards and intend to lunge or grab you in some way or another. This may look a little bit different depending on the situation that the bird is in. They might be lunging at you in an attempt to bite and grab onto you in order to advocate for their space. They could be lunging and striking at the bars of their cage in order to tell you that they mean business, that they are very upset and they want you to leave them alone or they may actually begin to lunge at the air in your general direction just to appear more threatening. Lunging is a very clear sign that your bird is generally upset and would like you to stop. Now it is important to recognize that sometimes a bird may lunge for things like play fighting where they could be either playing with your hands and be playfully pretending to fight in order to have fun as well as playing quite harshly with their toys where they may lunge and strike at the air around their toys and thrash them around. So this behavior is most obviously a way for your bird to tell you to back off, but it can be used in play for some species. Let's talk about the feather carriage next. So the way that a bird holds their feathers can tell you a lot about the way that they are feeling, but it can be a little tricky to tell when you are new to birds, because the way that they can fluff them can be very, very small and tiny and hard to notice if you don't know what you're looking for. The first one that is typically associated with a bird being upset or angry in some form or another is usually the nape of the neck. So the feathers that are right at the base of their neck between their shoulder blades up until the, the base of their head is going to inflate and puff outwards. That is usually the area a bird will puff up when they are really upset. If that area is fluffing up and the rest of the feathers are staying pretty thinned out or just moderately fluffed, you usually have a bird that's not too happy. Along with this, you may see a bird inflate entirely. So they will puff up their head and their body all the way down to their tail and everything will be massively inflated. This will not only help them appear bigger and more threatening, but it also protects them. It makes a big thick safety barrier where if an animal is attacking them, 
they don't necessarily know where the feathers end and the bird begins, and so a predator or another bird attacking them might get a mouthful of feathers instead. So this puffing up, this huge, massive fluffiness is designed to protect them as well as make them appear a little bit scarier and try and advocate that, for them to get more space. Along with fluffing, you will notice a lot of the time that the tail is a dead giveaway. When a bird is relaxed and comfortable, the tail will usually be thinned, all the feathers are folded over one another, and they're relaxed and comfortable. When a bird is really, really angry, you will usually find that the tail feathers will flare outwards. They are fully spread out as far as they can get them. You might notice some quivering or twitching of the tail feathers as well as they are agitated and flaring those feathers outwards. This is again a display to say that they are upset and angry, as well as a way to make themselves appear bigger and more threatening. Now of course feathers may flare out like this when they are doing things like preening and relaxing as well, but if they are standing straight at you and they are overall appearing to be quite agitated, the tail flaring out is probably not because they're preening in that moment. When we are faced with a bird that is scared instead of being aggressive, the feathers will typically deflate completely and they will plaster down as skinny as they can get. This is an attempt to make them look really, really small, so that way whatever's scaring them or threatening them will not see them as a threat and try and leave them alone. A really key part to bring a bunch of elements together is the way that a bird is holding their body, the way they are carrying themselves. In a bird that is relaxed and comfortable, their legs will be kind of tucked close to their body, they might be standing on one leg, they'll be relaxed, their body language will be a bit looser, and they'll kind of be squished down a little bit more on the perch. A bird that is relaxed and comfortable will be sitting at around like a 45, 60 degree angle on that perch where they're relaxed and comfortable, their body language is loose, they'll kind of be looking around their environment, they're not obsessively worried. What you might also notice, both with being scared and being aggressive or threatened, is that the wings of the bird will also extend a little bit. Usually just the shoulders will kind of peek out as they're usually preparing for flying away and so they're pulling those wings out, they might be twitching them out a little bit and they're just anticipating whether or not they need to fly away as fast as possible or launch themselves at the target in order to start a fight. In a bird that is really, really scared, their posture will be quite tall, usually. They'll make themselves really, really skinny, they'll stretch their neck out as tall as they can get it, and they'll usually freeze in place. A bird that is scared will try and be as motionless as possible, so that whatever is threatening them doesn't notice them and will hopefully just run by and not hurt them. Another thing you may notice in a bird that is scared is that they will be very fixated on a designated object. So the way that they are carrying themselves is not only skinny and tall, but you will not be able to distract this bird. They will be very fixated on whatever thing is scaring them. They will turn their heads sideways to it so that way the eye closest is able to really focus on that object and they will basically not be moving their heads unless they are just slightly turning in order to focus better on the object that they are looking at. In a bird that is relaxed and comfortable, you can usually expect to see them looking around, having their heads bopping in all sorts of directions in a more relaxed and slow manner. They're keeping an eye on their environment to keep themselves safe, but they're not super scared or worried about it. A bird that is petrified and terrified of something is going to be really fixated on their environment. They're going to be staring at whatever has scared them or potentially every little thing in the environment that's moving that they are scared of in that moment. If, for example, if you've taken your bird to the vet and they're in their carrier, they'll be super skinny and you'll notice that every person that walks by, they're probably alerting to, standing up even taller, and they'll trace them with their eyes to keep an eye on them to make sure that they're not going to get hurt. When we are shifting towards a bird that is posturing in a more aggressive manner, we have a few different ways that this might present. The first one that you will usually see most often is the bird getting lower on the perch. They will get their tummy as low as they can because if a fight is going to break out, the feet are actually the feet and the organs inside of their chest are going to be the most sensitive and vital places to protect. So a bird will get nice and low in order to protect themselves as well as put them in a prime position to attack. When they are nice and low, it's easy for them to strike at another bird's chest or toes, which is where they will go if they want to deal the most damage. If something is threatening the bird and they're not really necessarily feeling like they have a place to go, you may also see a behavior known as swaying, where a bird will usually get pretty low on the perch, they'll get that fluffed up body language, and then they will begin to sway back and forth a little bit to, with their beaks usually held wide open. And this is usually prepping themselves for attacking or trying to plot out a way that they can escape 
but they are usually swaying themselves back and forth and a fight is usually going to happen shortly after. Another thing you might see is them posturing a bit more upwards where well, they'll basically buff chest out and press their chest into another bird. This isn't usually a behavior you will see if a bird is feeling threatened by you in any regard. This is usually more of a bird telling another bird to back off. It's usually used in more of the context of them just feeling uncomfortable with the bird near them and then politely trying to tell them to go away. They aren't necessarily wanting to start a fight, but they are trying to puff their chest a bit, say, hey, I've had enough of this, I want some space, and they will press their chest into the other bird to try and get the other one to back off a little bit. The eyes are another big deal to pay attention to, and this is something that is not easy to notice in a lot of birds because they usually have very dark brown eyes, but in your larger birds it can be a bit more obvious, you will see a behavior known as eye pinning. And this is basically the bird constricting their pupil, making it super, super small, and then making it big again. And this can be two main things. Usually it is a bird that is just really excited and they can get overstimulated, and you will see that pupil pinning and getting small because the bird is excited by whatever they are looking at. You will see this a lot of the time in birds that are doing uh, trained vocalizations when they're really excited and happy about it or when they're playing with a favorite toy. But this behavior can also happen right before a bird is about to bite you. And the reason for this is that excitement and aggression sit right next to each other in the brain. So when a bird becomes more and more and more excited, sometimes all the electricity firing off up there will spill over into that aggressive part of the brain and they will end up biting. And so that eye pinning is a key thing to keep out for because it's usually a decent indicator for a lot of birds that they're kind of hitting that threshold and it's time to ease things back off. This is a very individual trait though and there are a lot of species that just do it a lot more frequently than others just when they are excited. Whereas for some birds it is almost exclusively happening right when they are about to go over their threshold. So that is one to keep an eye out for, um, but do keep in mind the rest of the body language cues that are going on. To go along with this, you can also use the general way that their eyes are shaped to tell a little bit more deeply how they are feeling. A bird that is more comfortable and relaxed is going to be kind of squinting their eyes a little bit. Shouldn't be super intense, but they'll have that bit of like an almond shaped eye. They'll maybe be blinking a little slower, kind of like they're getting a little sleepy. Their eyes will be relaxed and there's not a lot of energy to them. A bird that is afraid, in comparison, will have that eye as big as it can possibly get. It looks like it's going to bulge out of their head. They are opening that eye as wide as possible and they will not really be blinking or they will be blinking excessively quickly. So that way they can keep a very close eye on whatever they are feeling threatened by. Additionally, a bird that is feeling really excessively stressed out will squint their eyes quite dramatically. And you will see this a lot of the time in those videos of birds where they are sitting in a bathtub and a stream of water is just blasting on them, but they're not doing any bathing behaviors. And the bird's eye is basically completely shut and it's just being held just barely open. They are so excessively stressed and they don't know how to escape the situation that they just kind of give up and they are just shutting their eyes and participating in what's typically known as fawning. You have your typical responses of fight, flight, and then fawn is the one that people typically ignore. And this happens a lot when people or any creature undergoes extreme stress where you then try to appease as much as you possibly can in order to avoid that stress and conflict. And so by shutting their eyes, making themselves as small as possible, they're just getting overloaded with all of that stress and they just suppress themselves and will squint their eyes really, really tightly because of that immense amount of stress. This isn't to be confused with when a bird is getting sleepy, which again will have them closing their eyes quite slowly. And this is where the behavioral clusters that I talked about at the beginning become really important because a bird who is squinting their eyes out of stress is gonna be quite thinned out. They're gonna be very, very stiff and uncomfortable. A bird who's squinting their eyes because they're sleepy is going to be very, very fluffy, very poofed up. The head will be fluffed, the body will be fluffed. They might be standing on one leg. So all of those different parts of their body language will come together in order to give you that clearer understanding of why the eye squinting is happening in that context. So with this sort of baseline knowledge, I'm going to put up a couple different pictures here and I'm going to give you guys a couple seconds to figure out what you think the bird is feeling in that image and then I'm going to put some highlights, break down the body language and demonstrate what the bird is feeling in the image that is being shown.
So how'd you guys do? I know it can be a little bit tricky and pictures are honestly the hardest things to tell because you don't have any context. When we are analyzing behavior and body language, it's really important to know what happened prior to it occurring because it can tell you a lot about why the animal might be feeling the way that they are in that current situation. An image taken out of context can look drastically different than what was really happening. So it can be a little bit tricky trying to figure it out when you just have a snapshot from that bigger picture. I hope you guys had some fun and I hope you learned something new here today, but that will do it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.